Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Let's see what we can get done in this video. Another job that I've been getting on with this week is the Peugeot 205 cylinder head, which come in for some work. Uh, we've got it stripped. I pressure tested it and I gave it a reface as well. They're quite tricky to reface because these cylinder heads aren't parallel, so we can't just mount them on blocks and reface them. They're, they've got an angle here, so uh, I have to reface these a different way. Um, they've also got little waterways here, here, and then a big waterway here. So pressure tested them. You have to make sure that all of the waterways are clear to, to get the air into it, to pressure test it. But it pressure test fine. It held um, 40 PSI fine. It was a little bit warped around here. So that's got that out. Uh, putting it on the skimmer's got that out. <laughs> so what I did notice was, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's actually a bit of black along the top of this seat here. Uh, which means that the seats burnt slightly from the exhaust gases. My customer originally only wanted the valve stem oil seals replacing and um, that's why the valves had to come out. But now I've told him that, he said to just see if the valves were grinding. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, recondition the valves and then see if they'll grind in. If they don't grind in then the seats are going to need cutting. The problem with that is as soon as we reface the valve and cut the seat, you're changing the height of the valve and basically what that means is these are called a shim under bucket design. So that's the, the cam bucket and then this is the little shim that sits on top of the, you can see there, look that's rubbed on the top of the valve stem. So basically that sits like that on top of there and then the bucket sits on top and that's how you set this biscuit shim here is how you set the valve clearance. So any work that I do to the valve seat and the valve, the, sorry the valve seat on the valve and the valve seat on the cylinder head uh, will change the valve clearance. So what I'm going to do first is give the valves a shot blast, polish the stem, reface them and see if they'll grind into the seat. I'm hoping for the customer, because he didn't really want to spend a huge amount of money on it. In fact, this side's even more burnt. I think it probably makes sense just to cut the seat. Mm. Okay, well we'll see. Uh, I'll get on with the valves first. So over to the shot blaster with the with the inlet and exhausts. So that's all the carbon gone off these Peugeot valves. So the next thing to do is to get them in the lathe. Need to, need to clean my lathe actually, but there we go. Um, just clamp them not very tight. And then and then just run some really fine emery up and down the stem. And that will also give it a nice cross hatch finish. So if I get a standard one out, or one that I haven't done yet, we find another inlet. Exhaust, exhaust. So that's a before and an after. I mean, when I'm using the shot blaster, I don't get the stem. I kind of point it downhill and let it sort of work. Let's see if I can hold the GoPro better. So I point the shot blaster like that, so it so the shot comes and hits the back of the valve, and then across the front as well. And that's really fine shot that's in the shot blaster as well. Right, let me get these other six done so that's all eight of these done and now we're going to give the faces a reface so over to the comac and let's get these uh get these in this machine so 
so I'm bringing the valve onto the stone really carefully. Third exhaust. First one of the four inlets. And that's it, that's all the valves now refaced. So the next thing for me to do is to see if they're gonna grind into the seat. So I'm gonna look to see which two seats look the worst. And I would say it's this cylinder here, cylinder number two. So I'm just gonna grind the two valves in on this cylinder first, and then have a judgment call on whether I'm gonna cut the seats or not. This, is, this exhaust seat here is actually quite black around here. So this is going to be the first one that I'm going to do. Now to grind the valves in, I use something called carborundum paste. This is a medium compound and this is a fine compound. So I'm going to use the medium. Now I've refaced the valves. Technically it doesn't matter which guide they go in i mean obviously all the exhausts have got to go in the exhaust because of the size of the head of the valve uh, but we're basically resetting the seat we've polished the stem so it, it we can basically go where we want on this now all it needs is a tiny bit of carborundum paste and you just go all the way around the valve so you've got one nice continuous line. You don't need to chuck loads on there. And then whatever's left on your finger, you can just use on the next valve. Like so. Just get a bit more off that. There. Right. 
Okay, and then you use something called a lapping stick. Which just basically sucks onto the valve. Like that. And then with a tiny little bit of penetrating oil, that just helps break down the carborundum and get it into the seat quite quick. Quite quick. And then it's a case of... Oh, hold that. That nearly went horribly wrong for the camera. I think I might have to move the camera. I will. And you can hear the carborundum breaking into the seat and then as it's getting quieter the paste is breaking down. That's it, that's that one done. And then to check the valve we look at the valve and what we're looking for is a nice grey line all the way around the valve seat. So if I show you one that hasn't been ground in, it's nice and shiny versus the one that I have ground in which has got a really nice grey line all the way around the valve. Now if we hadn't have cut if we hadn't have refaced these valves and we was just trying to grind them in and it was grey and then mist, that means the valve is bent or, or started to wear away. Um, so that's for cylinder number two. So I'm going to write number two on there. and then grind in the inlet on the same seat and then just check it all. So once again, that stick's not very good. Tiny bit of penetrating oil. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get these to grind in first because the customer wants the job right but he said if he could save some money he would do and grinding the valve in is a bit cheaper than cutting it. I think these are going to need cutting. So once again that valve's ground in perfectly, as you can see with the grey line all the way around, it's not very clean actually. But, as you can see on the seat, it's ground in there and then it's shiny there. And it's shiny there and then it's ground in there. So, problems. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got to cut these seats. And you can see it's ground in there. It's missed there, it's ground in there, and it's missed there. So this seat has moved like that, in fact, and that seat's moved like that. So that's it for tonight. I'm going to um, crack on with that tomorrow, and I'll cut the seats and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll show that. The Peugeot head is now mounted onto the Centronic, and uh, I'm going to cut all the seats basically because the two that I've tested 
are, are out like I said um, earlier the the seat has kind of spread that way because it's grinding in here and here here and here but not touching it there and there so there's no point in me just trying to grind them all in because I would assume that they're all going to be the same and it won't be right if I was to just cut two seats so I know that two of them are wrong so I'm going to cut all eight so the first thing to do is to plot the angle of the valve seat um, which I do with this tool here I've already changed the pilot in the head of the machine um, to the right one for the seat so the next thing that I need to do is just set the cutter up um, both inlet and exhaust valves on this are 45 degree it's not a race cylinder head so it can have quite a nice wide seat and then just put this up on here loose the clamp And then set it up so it's cut in on the same position of where I've set the tool up on the valve, which is at the top. Then just self center it again to reset the machine. I'll start off with the one that I ground because we know that's out, and what that should also show is how far out it was. You should be able to hear it. I'm going to stick the Vera drive on, switch that on, and just start to come down onto the seat. And what you should hear is it it had cut quite unevenly where the seat is out. change the cutter in that. The actual exhaust seat in this cylinder head is quite hard so I'm going to put a, a later or a newer style cutter in it which has got the same angle on it but it's just got a, a better tip in there so it will cut hell of a lot better than that one that one's um, it's not juddery or, any, uh, or anything but it's just it's kind of chopping away at the seat and I don't want that kind of finish so we're gonna take that out put that one in so again just put the setting tool on which is here the Vero drive off that's it that's self centered let's see if you can hear the how distorted the seat is on this one Yeah, straight away it's cutting off this right hand side but not touching anywhere else. That's it, it's all the way around now. You can feel it through 
this part of the machine when it starts to cut nice this you can kind of feel it going off one side if I put this see if you can see it self centering so I'll press this button up here and then you'll see the Centronic moving and then as soon as this light lights up here that means the head of the machine is centralized into the guide and I can lock that part of the machine off so it's ready to cut now so we put the Vera drive on it and that seat there wasn't actually as bad but it was a little bit out on this back corner but that one there probably would have ground in So there's one more exhaust to do and then I'll get on with the inlets um, so I'll show you what it looks like finished. That's it's all out the cleaner now and the seats all the inlets was quite badly distorted actually so it is a really good job that we check this because he would have definitely had some um, compression sealing problems with this but it's all good now. Um, I've just put it through the cleaner again to get the swarf off from the seat cutter I'm going to give it a blow off, I've kept everything in order so I'm going to rebuild the cylinder head in, in order as laid out so basically it has, these are spring seats so these go in the cylinder head and then the spring sits on top of the seat and that stops any kind of wear on the aluminium of the cylinder head then that's the retainer for it, obviously the valve and then we've got the bucket in the shim um, so when I set the tappets I'll show you how I do that but on this style biscuit shim I use this to measure the thickness of the shim so we just open that up put that in there and that tells me what size the shim is um, but what I'll do is I'll assemble the cylinder head and then I'll show you exactly how I do that So, so that is the valves all now fitted into the cylinder head. I'm just going to ve very lightly tap the top of the valve stem just to settle the collet into the valve. And then I'll show you how I set the valve clearances. So what I do when I'm setting the tappets or the valve clearances is on a notepad i write down the order of which the valves are in starting from number one so on this it's exhaust inlet inlet exhaust exhaust inlet inlet exhaust i then write down what the valve clearances should be and then before i assemble the cylinder head i write down what the thickness of the shims are so i'll start with this first exhaust and that shim is 126 thou so what I do is I write down 126 thou I'll then move on to the next which is an inlet and that's 125 thou another inlet 121 
126. Hundred and twenty four, hundred and twenty two, hundred and twenty one. Well, that's one hundred and twenty one and a half, so I'll put a tiny little five at the top, <coughs> and then the last one, one hundred and twenty four. So that's mapped out my valve clearance shims. Then what I'm going to do now is carry on building the cylinder head and then with the feeler gauges I'll turn the cam over, see what sizes I've got and jot them down. I'll show you how I do that. First thing I'm going to eat this hobnob. Sam's left hobnobs here. Sam do not leave hobnobs here because I'm going to eat them all. So that's the camshaft in, uh, it's got a bit of tipex on there actually where I mark the buckets. <coughs> I've nipped the cam up, I've not put the oil seal in because until I've set the tappets I don't think it's worth doing that. I've put a very little light bit of oil on the cam lobes just to stop them scuffing on the bucket. I don't want to drown them in oil because we're going to use feeler gauges at the moment and they're not nice to use when they're covered in oil. But what I'm going to do is this is the oil spray bar what feeds oil from the main caps from sorry the main cam caps and then it sprays onto the top of the camshaft lobes. So I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in there and what that does is it just oils these cam journals here to stop them scuffing in the caps. Then when you turn it over, because everything's been kept in order and I haven't really taken a huge amount off the seat, when you turn the engine over with the spanner, it actually feels quite nice. It feels that clicking. Normally when the tappets are quite close, that's what it does as the spring pushes the cam off one of the other um, lobes. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is start to measure the valve clearances. Um, you can normally do two at the same time on the base circle. So what, you, what, you, what I'm actually doing here is I'm measuring the distance from the base circle of the cam to the top of the bucket. It's a set, it, it, it's, it's a different setting for different cams. So I've been upstairs, looked in the data book for a Peugeot 205, found what the clearances and with the feeler gauges so these are strips of metal that are all marked with a different size so that one there is 21 thousandths of an inch thick which is just over half a mil right so let's start measuring Right, so I'm starting off with an exhaust, which will always, an exhaust is normally a wider setting on a standard engine to the inlet. So what we're looking for is eighth out. <clears throat> so I'm going to start at six and then just do two at a time. So we're at 10 thou already. You see 12 thou now is tight in there. So we go up to 13. Now 13 doesn't go in. So that one there is 12 thou. So on my bit of paper, I just write 12 there. So I'll move over to this inlet. Now 13 is fits, but it's quite tight. So I bet 14 doesn't go in. Okay. So that one there is 13. So 
we're going to move over to the next pair of lobes to check. <coughs> so I'm going to start at eight. So eight doesn't go through that inlet there. So we'll go back a bit more. Let's try four. <coughs> So six goes, but it's tight, seven doesn't. So that one there is six. That's 11. And the next pair, start with 11 again. So 11 is tight there, but falls in that one. So that's 11, because the 12 didn't fit. Thirteen's tight, 14 doesn't fit, so that's 13. And then the last pair. So, okay. So six fits, seven does, eight does, nine just, ten doesn't. So nine. Eleven. So, <clears throat> right, so that's the valve clearances. And then what I'm after is 16 and 8. So every single one needs adjusting. But to work it out quick, basically, we need a smaller number in here. We need a smaller number in there. We need a larger number there. So next thing I'm going to do is get my box of shims. So um, I'll lay them out, see if I've got the shims in stock so I don't have to grind them. If I haven't got them in stock, it's not a problem. I've got my shim grinder upstairs so I can just um, get the shims exactly where I need them. So I'll make a start on it now. So this is the box of additional shims that I've got to pick from to get these valve clearances right. And I've got all these numbers here, so at the minute I'm trying to use the shims that are already there by mixing them up, and the other ones I'll take from there. So the cylinder head is back together for the second time, um, so let's go through the tappets, hopefully they're bang on now. So this is an inlet. The exhaust is wider, so I'm going to flick straight up to the roughly what the size is. On to the next pair. The other thing that I do is I always, the, normally you get a top and a bottom tolerance when you set tappets, it's normally about three thou, but I always try and get them within a thou each side of what they should be. I mean the closer to absolutely bang on the right size the better. Turn the music down a bit.
Last part. That's it. So, so the tappet clearance should be sixteen thou for the in, uh, for the exhaust and eight thou for the inlet. So, that's sixteen. That's eight. That's sixteen. That's eight. And then I work to plus or minus one thou. So, that's nine. So that's okay. 15 that's okay 15 that's okay and seven so that's it they're all absolutely bang on so then the last thing that i'm going to do to this is i'm going to set it up so the cam is roughly in the right position for firing on cylinder number one which i'm pretty sure actually on these peugeots that's cylinder number one uh, let me just have a look. I can work it out by. Now, I'm going to set it up so what I think is number one, which is that normally, is right. So, what we're trying to do is get it where the cam is pointing inlet and exhaust like that away from the other. So, basically on this end cylinder as the exhaust cam is coming off the bucket and closing the valve the inlet is just starting to open so that's the overlap of the cam so if i set it there i know either one or four whichever way around the cylinder is 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 right and then i'm going to take this bolt out i'm going to undo this top cap which i'll show so I've undone this cap, uh, the GoPro stopped recording it. The camera keeps switching itself off, <laughs> it's doing my head in, but. So what I've done is undone this cap, lifted this cap up, fitted the oil seal, because it just pushes in without the cap on, and then just nip that down. I've talked, talked up all the cam caps. So this is now ready for my customer co to collect. It's not a fully reconditioned head, because we haven't put valve guides in it. We haven't sort of cleaned up all the corrosion. It only come in for strip, pressure test, skim, stem seals. Um, but where the valve seats were so bad and the valves were so bad, because we've changed all the clearances, uh, we've had to go through the, the valve clearances as well. Um, but that's all done now, so I can get hold of my customer, work his bill out, let him know that it's ready, and uh, hopefully he'll be collecting it today. Just need to give this face a bit of a wipe off just to neaten it up hi right, guys I thought I would just quickly add into this video um, a head skim the head is uh, quite a, a rare one it's of a 1957 R-type Continental 4.9 and um, I'll show it you I've covered it in uh, in blue pen to show you how far warped it is um, six of the valves are actually in the block it's only the inlet valves that are in the cylinder head so this is coming for a light reface and as you can see it is the width well it's just bigger than the width of the bed of the machine so what I've done is I've bolted this plate to the cylinder head and then clamped down to hold it but like I say I've already took a, a skim off it I've covered it in blue just to show how bad it is. So that's this um, cylinder head all refaced now. It's had uh, 10 thou off it in total. 
Um, it, I, I mean, I'd already taken a, a couple of cuts off it, then I marked it in the blue, and then uh, two, two passes over to get it flat. <clears throat> um, it's been welded quite a lot before, so there's some blow holes in it. I'm not gonna do anything about that. It only come in really because it wasn't flat. It's now perfectly flat. Uh, you can see bits of blue and that's where obviously where the, the pen has uh, gone into the holes in the cylinder head. But that's nice and flat, that's ready for my customer now to come and collect. Hi guys, well this is the last part of the video, I'm going to do a bit of work on my Escort today. Um, I've got a fair bit to do like put the rear lights in, uh, sort out all underneath, there's some bolts that are missing underneath from the diff. I had a new diff carrier put on it which is all built into there so i've got to tighten all that up prop chaff bolts things like that then where i've not touched it for a long time i just need to go through the brakes this has got ap's on the rear and it's got big ap's on the front as well but they're all they're all a little bit seized on at the minute where I've not done anything with the car for a little while. But yeah. <clears throat> and the other thing I've got to do is put the grill in. I don't know whether, I mean, it's, this car's a road car, um, also a race car, but I don't know whether to just not really use it for the road at all and uh, put spotlights in here with covers on it instead of the actual proper lights or keep the proper lights in it and see if I can get the covers to fit. I've got to order a new grill for it. These are carbon quarter bumpers on it and it's got a carbon bumper for the rear and then it's a carbon bonnet and then it's got the Honda S2000 engine mounted all the way back so I've got to give it a good clean in there. I took out the original wiring loom that was made for the car and the dashboard that, that was in it. It had a um, race technology dash here and the ECU was mounted there um, <clears throat> I've taken all that out didn't really like the way it was all mounted and things like that and the wiring loom was a bit of a mess also where I had it painted there's bits of overspray on it so I need to go all through here and get it all clean I want to take the seat out and then move this seat bracket further over to try and pull the seat out a little bit further because with me being a bit big, this is a bit tight for me. And then what I've bought for it is all this ECU Master stuff. Uh, I bought an ECU Master wiring loom, but I'm actually not gonna use that because my friend James who owns Relentless performance is going to make the loom for me. So I don't think we need this. I need to speak to him about that And then I bought a switch panel for it I bought an ECU master Management system which is in there a PMU so this gets rid of all the fuse box and everything and the relays That's a power management unit so I've got that for it and then that is the GPS to CAN module for the speed and everything, I believe. And then I bought the bigger display for it, uh, which is in there. So, once again, James at Relentless, I think, has 3D printed me a, a cowl and a mount for that. I'm going to mount that somewhere like that, I think. I need to get in the car and just make sure it's not in in the way of the view. But, I mean, I could even mount it a little bit lower like that or something like that. And then I think I'm going to put... This aluminium's got to go back in here, which I've got. I'm going to trim that bar back out neater than that. There's quite a few bits that I want to tidy up in here. But I think I'm going to mount the switch panel close to where I can get to it. Um, and the ECU and some other bits either over on that side or even on here I'm not quite sure yet but I'll work that out and then in here is the, the old ECU that's the old wiring loom 
getting the old ECU out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'll just um, probably get that on Marketplace or something, or s sell it or gift it to someone, I'm not too sure. I did actually buy a an air fuel ratio gauge for it as well, but I don't need to put that in because I think the new ECU will display all that as well. And then we've got to get some mirrors on it. So yeah, the first thing that I need to do is start to plan where everything's going to go for the wiring loom. The only other thing with this car is I can never take a passenger in it because the car, the car is flat floored, so the exhaust runs through here. So I'm not sure whether to change this and make it where the exhaust just runs through the, the centre part of the car through here. There's enough room to mount it. So I'm not sure what to do about that really. What do you guys think? Should I bring the exhaust, shall I leave the exhaust running in the car? Or should I run it somewhere else? I could tuck it back through and out and keep it coming through there maybe but it just means I can't take passengers in it so but I do want to race it so I'm not sure what to do the other thing that I was going to do today was wash my Chevy but it's absolutely as soon as I decided to do that it started raining so that's kind of ruined so I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up in the garage I need to get rid of the Tracy's old cabinets and stuff um, the, the garage has been, it, we've never really finished this, I had a fire in here for about two years ago and I've got it this far but I haven't sort of set, finished setting it up so I'm going to do that today, just get a bit more of the garage done and then that'll be ready for um, me bringing a few tools back and, um, and yeah and then I can work on my car. So what do you think guys, uh, if you want to leave some comments of what things you think I should do to my Escort, whether I'll supercharge it, turbocharge it, leave it naturally aspirated, mount in the dash and things like that, do I keep it as a race car or do I keep it as a dual road car race car, what do you guys think, do you like the colour? If you could leave comments below on what you think to it and and what you think I should do to it, that would be great. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, if you could hit the subscribe button, please. And thanks everyone for watching, guys. And we'll catch you next week on the next video. Ta-ra.